School of Urban and Regional Planning. He's one of the experts in the Philippines in the fields of urban planning and development, transport logistics, with his wide range of experiences in the academic sector, extension services, and consultancy works. Currently, he's one of the Mindanao Development Authority's consultants for the Mindanao Development Corridors Project. Ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome Dr. Hussein Lidasan. In the interest of time, in the conduct of our session, we have an able timekeeper at the back, Jose Francis Lerado. If you will hear one ring of a bell, that will signify two minutes left. And if you will hear two rings, that will signify time is up. So for our discussants and for our resource speakers, we have um, Francis Lerado at the back to um, remind you of the time. For copies, by the way, of the presentation of the conference, it will be posted in MINDA website, www.minda.gov.ph. So, again, without further ado, Dr. Hussein Lidasan. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, good morning and assalamu alaikum to my Muslim brothers and uh, sisters. So, I don't need to elaborate more why we are here, but what I'm hoping to, of course, to be here, especially in session one, is what do we really mean by federalism? How will it uh, affect our lives here? And more importantly, will it address what we call inclusive development, inclusive growth? Will it consider the geopolitical and social cultural intricacies of our country, not just in Mindanao, but of course, uh, nationwide, and how will this really contribute in enhancing our development? And as one of the speakers mentioned last night during a formal meeting, he was he, uh, he mentioned about this is the first session will be called uh, Federalism so, uh, 101, meaning it is an introductory course if we have a, such a course in college or any graduate program. And uh, for our speakers, I am glad to know that one of the speakers is not so younger than me because we were came from the same uh, city, Cotabato, attorney Benny uh, Bacani, of course he's the executive director of the Institute for Autonomy and Governance, and also a younger brother of my Barcada in high school. And the second speaker who will provide some insights on the US federal model and uh, experience is uh, Professor Mr. Hezekiah, Conception, a professor of the Ateneo in Zamboanga University. And you, you may find their bio profile in the programs that were given to you. And our approach here will be, we will first allow them to present. Then after that, the discussions, who will be Dr. Panagito, also Professor Alciu, uh, Attorney Najib Sinaringo, also uh, a distant relative of ours, and he also is very well versed not only in governance but even in autonomy and inclusive, inclusiveness with respect to governance. And then, uh, okay, so we only have, well, sorry, we only have, I think the one alone, because in the first one that was given to me, there were more, so I think for now only be two. So for the format of our session, as already mentioned, you will be given the speakers. 25, supposedly 25 minutes, but if, if they can wrap up within 20 minutes so that there will be more time for the question and answer later, it would be appreciated. And for the timer, of course, I mentioned about the first two minutes, one ring, then the second the second ring would imply already finished. Afterwards, we will put off the uh, sound system because I'm sure uh, our uh, uh, host would prefer that we will be on time so that there will be more uh, discussions. Maybe. So without any further ado, I may call on the first speaker, Attorney uh, Benny Makani. And put it that one. Oh, sorry, so how was he? Sir, it's a picture. Sorry, let's say that I'm not asking you. So, uh, my apologies. So, I'm not going to be able to get the program in the case. But at any 
any rate, uh, may I call on Professor Concepcion for his uh, presentation. What we call the one <laughs> to the officials of the uh, Philippine Development Studies Institute, uh, the officials of the Mindanao Development Authority, and the officers and uh, administrators of the Ateneo de Zamboanga University. As uh, mentioned by the chair, the first session will be Federalism 101, so I will present my uh, topic or my assignment from very academic and non-partisan uh, uh, approach and uh, it would be instructive for the audience to note that uh, before we had this session we already had uh, several initiatives in the past. Uh, we had this information campaign conducted by the Universidad de Zamboanga through the research director of UZ, Dr. Bien Gregorio is here and then Western Mindanao State University also conducted a forum on federalism and our very own Ateneo de Zamboanga Graduate School had uh, a research presentation which focused on uh, various issues and that included research based talks on federalism. So let, let me go to my uh, presentation. These are the objectives because this is a very, uh, I want this to be a very academic uh, presentation. Uh, since I was told that this is part of the policy research initiative of the Philippine Institute for Development Studies, I uh, decided to list down some concerns or issues that can be uh, used and be generated as research uh, issues uh, later. This is a slide that I use to clarify, to inform to our students, to illustrate how the federal system works. Now let me make it very clear uh, there are many models of federalism. You have the European model, and in fact, uh, you have Spain, which is unitary parliamentary democracy. But when you look at the functions and operations of the autonomous communities, there are 17. They actually work and function as a federal system. And then you have another Western European country like Portugal. It has two uh, autonomous uh, regions. But for the United States, when you look at the illustration, the different colored plate numbers there would uh, illustrate to you that when you adopt a federal system, you can uh, use the efficiency argument to sell to market the idea of federalism because of the uh, quality and timing of government response. And uh, I use this as a very good example because in the past, we had uh, concerns with uh, a government uh, office and uh, when you look at the American experience, uh, you have 50 or more LTOs addressing the transportation or vehicle or licenses concerns of the American citizens and nationals and uh, the functions of the land transportation office is devolved. Uh, from my experience as a teacher, this is easier to uh, illustrate how the federal system works to students, but since uh, the chair mentioned let's start with Federalism 101, I decided to retain the slide to clarify and illustrate how a federal system in the American experience works. Alright, so 101, so we talk of federalism, the idea of a federal form of government means that there are two levels or divisions of government, the national government and the local or state uh, governments. Now. Uh, from my observation in the states, they do not use the term decentralization, they usually use the term federal. Why? Because they want to emphasize that the powers that the local <coughs> government units and the states uh, enjoyed or performed were derived from their own uh, original political and legal experience. They did not derive their powers from the states or I mean from the national or federal government. That is why if we go to the uh, framework, uh, when you look at this framework, you have here the first and the left column, the powers of the federal government. They are sometimes called the delegated powers. Why delegated powers? Because their power, these powers were delegated or given 
by the 13 states that drafted the U.S. Constitution. The reserve powers, meaning the original powers, belong to the states, and then you have the shared or concurrent powers. I think in our system, when we talk, when we discourse about federalism, I think the reverse uh, will happen because we have powers granted by the uh, Constitution to Congress as a representative of the national government that will be devolved or that is already being devolved to the local government units. Uh, so from a very theoretical perspective, when you look at the powers of the national of the, of the state governments, these powers were granted to them by the uh, Constitution. And like us, in our system, the powers of the local governments were granted by Congress. And the example there is the local government code. All right, so uh, I emphasize one uh, example because, as I'm saying, the American federal system is not the uh, it all be all uh, model or framework or uh, template as we discuss the possibilities of shifting to a federal form of government. But when you look at the US experience, uh, they have experience in the, I mean problems in the education sector. In 2012, when I was in Texas, I was surprised to hear that some public schools in some school districts in Texas were closed. Why? Because of the funding problem. Why? Because of the contentious debates between the federal and the state and district governments. So this is one lesson that we can learn from the experience of the U.S. federal system. And this is what in the program is mentioned as probably one of the pitfalls or challenges that we should avoid committing because I understand later this afternoon a proposed no, constitutional model for a federal form of government in the Philippines will be presented. All right, the other uh, novel issue that I consider that is worth probably discussing or talking about is the taxation system. Uh, because it is a federal system in the states, different states uh, would have their own different, let's say, structures and practices in tax collection. So the capital gains rate from one state might vary from the let us say capital gains rate from another. Income taxes would vary uh, also according to uh, states. And uh, one of the things that we have to consider is that in the American system, some citizens there are taxed twice when they pay their income taxes because aside from the income taxes collected by the state governments, the federal government, the IRS, would also collect <laughs> income taxes. So again, uh, this is one of the pitfalls that we have to consider. And, uh, I'm not a lawyer, I'm not a constitutionalist, but uh, I hope in the drafting, the charting of a proposed uh, constitution for a federal model, the taxation powers of the ambitious states and the federal government would be uh, clarified to avoid uh, debates and uh, arguments or problems. Uh, okay, so th these are examples. Different states would have different sources of revenues, and as I mentioned, they uh, determine uh, different rates and right here, the, the rates no, that is given or granted to the local governments is fixed uh, in the states. Uh, it would depend on how much the state needs and how much would Congress appropriate every fiscal year. Okay, so this is actually just an uh, illustration. So some states would have 50% uh, of their tax revenue from, let us say, sales taxes. So uh, your Tennessee, South Dakota, uh, income taxes for probably richer citizens like Virginia, New York, Massachusetts, Oregon. So uh, th th this is one of the peculiar characteristics of the U.S. federal uh, system. All right, so uh, since I only have 25 minutes, let me go to the challenges. Uh, my observation and experience is that uh, the American system is not perfect. But uh, there are probably lessons that you can learn no, from the uh, same states. So number one is, uh, historically, uh, when the United States was formed, uh, there was one issue that they failed to resolve, and actually that led to the Civil War from uh, 1861 to 65. Why? Because the states that wanted to preserve the institute, institute, institution of slavery argued that slavery is a local concern and therefore the national government has no business telling us to abolish or remove slavery. And they invented the theory of nullification theory. The theory simply says when in the judgment of the state governments the 
intervention of the national government will not work for the local government unit, the state legislature can just file and approve a resolution nullifying the act of the national government. Then you also have the issue of individual liberties uh, and gun rights. Uh, America is one of the most uh, gun-induced uh, violent uh, countries in the world. And every time there's an effort of the national or federal government to regulate guns, many people, almost half or more than half of the Americans, you don't know. The Second Amendment of the U.S. Constitution tells us that only gun, the right to bear arms, is a constitutional right. And therefore, the federal government has no business telling us where, how, and when are we going to carry guns. In fact, there are states in the U.S. that have what you call the uh, open carry system. So, sa America, hindi uso yung covalent gun ban. Bawal yun. That is unconstitutional. We have to avoid this. No? So, I think the parameters of property ownership, including gun rights, I hope, could be spelled out clearly in the draft uh, constitution. And then, of course, Oh, okay, uh, and then the issue of social and racial equality. Uh, well, other issues like racial equality, gender equality, I have, I think, will have to be defined. Uh, so that uh, we will not waste time going to the courts, debating whether same-sex marriage should be accepted or regulated, or should they be declared uh, as open and legal in all over the uh, country. Uh, and then, of course, the immigration, social security, and healthcare issues. I think these are uh, insights that we can learn from the American experience. If you read the news, uh, Donald, President Donald Trump recently uh, signed an executive order which abolished the amnesty program or DACA granted by uh, former President Obama to children of illegal immigrants to the States. Uh, DACA is different action for children, I forgot the letter A, but the idea there is to defer the deportation of uh, children, not necessarily born in the United States of illegal aliens, especially if they're studying, but uh, President Donald Trump said no. Uh, it's causing a lot of social problems. It's uh, milking our national and federal budget because we have to feed and provide uh, education to these people. So President Trump decided an executive order abolishing DACA and uh, some, I think, a good number of our Kababayans children of Filipino illegal immigrants to the United States would be affected. I think the number mentioned is 800,000, about 800,000 uh, in children will be affected. Actually, residents from the age of 16 to 31. Okay, uh, next uh, item. All right, so the good practices, even if there are debates, I remember Sen Senator Aquilino Pimentel, it was he actually who said, uh, democracy thrives in debates because every now and then Congress is being criticized for spending too much time in debates. But Senator Aquilino Pimentel said, no, democracy thrives in debates. So, contentious issues over federal state rights and uh, uh, state government powers are healthy for uh, democracy. And of course, there is cooperation and compromise uh, like interstate commerce uh, and then creativity and innovation uh, there are uh, areas where uh, states, without necessarily getting a clearance or approval from the national government, can immediately address a local issue, a local concern. And uh, let, let me cite a very local context, even before we shift to federalism. Uh, among the Tausu, there, there is a very novel way of conflict resolution strategy. Uh, in Holo, for example, there are cases of homicides if you define it according to our Philippine legal system. But uh, from my observation, there are cases where uh, conflicts among families which results in homicide that are resolved by local community leaders applying local customs and uh, uh, traditions. And so, uh, th th these are practices that can be adapted, that can be institutionalized, especially in the uh, areas of conflict uh, resolution. And then, of course, I already mentioned the concept of efficiency and responsiveness. And then when you talk of cultural democracy, uh, especially in the case of the Philippines, uh, this probably will address the aspirations of the Muslim communities in the Philippines because 
their culture is distinct, although they are part of a bigger uh, uh, nation, the Filipino nation, but uh, their culture, their history are distinct. And so uh, probably if we shift to a federal form of government, then that will allow Muslim Filipino communities to chart their own destiny and preserve their uh, distinct uh, uh, culture as uh, Muslim Filipinos. And even for uh, Samuanga, I remember when we had a presentation in Western Mindanao State University, one of the discussions, my uh, former classmate in college who is teaching in my said, I will agree to federalize if the Samuanga Peninsula will also be recognized as one of the states of an envisioned United States of the Philippines, so a federal republic of the Philippines. Why? Because some of the culture is distinct from the other or bigger Filipino national culture, although we concede that we're part of a republic of the Philippines. So there are actually many issues that are generated when we come into this uh, discourse. So, many questions, I mean, many people are asking, can we really, I mean, is a shift to federalism, a formula for success. No, in fact, that's the reason why I think we're here. And uh, if we situate our discussion in the context of research, I think uh, we can probably still conduct consultations, uh, probably come up with a national consensus to really determine if there is really a national clamor to federalize because we are already uh, decentralized based on the local government code. And uh, oh, honestly, uh, while uh, I talk about federalism, I talk about basic concepts of federalism, I'm also asking if there is really a national clamor to change our form of government. Although uh, the issue of granting full and genuine autonomy to the Muslim communities is a novel and lofty idea. And in fact, I'm glad President Duterte is uh, pursuing the idea of uh, crafting and actually enacting eventually the Bangsamoro uh, basic law. So, if I situate this in the context of academic research, perhaps th these are areas that we can continue to uh, discuss. Not, notwithstanding the presence already of what you call the uh, framework or the proposed uh, model for a Philippine federal uh, system. Uh, we, we look into our political history. Uh, we acknowledge that the Muslim communities have already operated and functioned as independent states. And, and this was well uh, elaborated by Professor Rudy Rudil. These Muslim Sultan, more Sultanates, have all the elements of independent states. So, the idea of federalizing will also, or hopefully will address the aspirations of the Muslim communities to experience a genuine autonomous region or community within the general framework of the Republic of the Philippines. And one of the reasons why I decided to talk about American federalism, because I remember in 2009, when we visited Camp Darapanan in Maguindanao, uh, Attorney Michael Mastura and one of the leaders of the MILF cited uh, the U.S. federal model as probably one of the models that can be explored in the event the Bangsamoro communities will adopt a federal form of uh, government as part of the uh, final peace agreement between the Bangsamoro communities and the national uh, government. And then the political culture, uh, historically, and culturally we have been accustomed to being governed by a paternalistic, strong and centralized government. So, uh, to what extent will we be able to undo uh, this uh, uh, political culture where we always expect the central government to decide various concerns uh, for us. And then political expediency, uh, perhaps from the point of view of President Duterte, this is the best uh, uh, way to address the centuries long uh, conflict in Mindanao, not Bangsamoro problem or Moro problem. In the Western Mindanao State University, we do not say uh, moral problem because the Muslim communities there and students would there. No, sir, it's not a moral problem. It's a Filipino problem created in Mindanao. Anyway, so you, you talk about the need to address this issue, this conflict, and then cost. 
I think uh, oh, si Dr. Ballesteros, if I'm not mistaken, earlier mentioned about the cost. And ako, I'm not an economist, but I also look as a lay person at the cost of uh, overhauling the bureaucracy. Because if we federalize, we will be adding another layer of bureaucracy for the entire country. Imagine we'll have 11 or 13 uh, states, so for the economists probably, uh, we can, you can conduct a feasibility study. Although the argument there is, uh, compared to the cost of the conflict that has affected and destroyed lives and properties in Mindanao, probably the resources we invest to adapt a new form of government if it will address the conflict in Mindanao would be uh, very minor or small. And then of course, as I mentioned earlier, we can of course uh, look at the other alternative uh, models of federalism. I already mentioned the case of Spain and Portugal. And of course, again, the question there, will it immediately address the concern, the question of conflict and secession? Not necessarily. When you look at the case of uh, Spain, for example, Catalonia, uh, even if the initiative was not approved by the national government, held a plebiscite, and if I'm not mistaken, the Catalans, I think, overwhelmingly voted to separate, to secede from the Spanish national uh, government. Although the Spanish parliament said, no, your political exercise is illegal because that was not approved by the parliament. But uh, I mean, it's a very significant or tangible touch of the sentiments of the Catalan. So whether you're talking of Spain, the United States, or the Philippines, uh, the idea that is we're exploring, we're considering possibilities. We try to be creative to address many social problems in Mindanao. Even in the States, uh, although they joke, but they say, oh, uh, this is the time to secede from, from the Union, California or Texas. Okay, so, so the idea of secession may not be necessarily uh, obliterated from the consciousness of people, even if you adapt a form of government that addresses local needs and uh, uh, concerns. And then of course, as I mentioned, uh, what's the national consensus today? Uh, is there an overwhelming clamor to change the form of uh, government? Uh, and then other considerations for Zamwanga, well, uh, the idea for uh, my fellow academics whom I discussed the issue with, they say, payag kami, we agree, basta el, Sambuanga Peninsula, que da también Estado del República del Filipinas. Y cosa para la cabecera. For as long as Sambuanga Peninsula will be made one of the states of an ambition federal republic of the Philippines. Therefore, what will be the capital of Sambuanga Peninsula? Of course, Sambuanga City. Because we're talking of what you call logistical and other practical concerns. I think one of the models presented if you look at the map, is there's going to be a northern Mindanao state, although that is one of the models that I have observed. But uh, the capital would be Davao. And so many Sambuangenians would say, so it's no different because we still have to fly to Davao. So between Davao and Manila, we might as well go to Manila na lang. Uh, but uh, th that's one of the concerns. Uh, if these are practical concerns, if we want a uh, federal form of government to be realistic and sensitive to the local uh, concerns. So, I uh, end my uh, semester course in one minute. Yeah, because actually I teach this course. <laughs> okay? Uh, so that uh, we can have more time for uh, discussion uh, and uh, reaction for us, the prophet Isaiah said. Come, let us reason together.
my uh, little knowledge of uh, federalism and the context in which uh, we are trying to uh, uh, apply it. No? Um, so that was a very good background of federalism um, 101. What I'll do for the next uh, 20 minutes is just uh, uh, try to contextualize it. But this is a very big picture also, no? because the other, uh, the subsequent, uh, the succeeding speakers will talk more about details. No? So, uh, later on, um, si La Chumiral will talk about the, the fiscal uh, challenges and the discussions also and they will have very concrete uh, proposals also uh, and uh, the PDP Laban Federalism Institute will also present their concrete proposal. So <clears throat> don't mind this uh, this title, it's just that, uh, um, okay. The usual question is what will change if we shift to federal? And if the shift to federalism is a form of a political reform, so, because if we are going to change, at least we have to change for the better. So we are not just changing, just just for the sake of changing. And uh, this actually um, tells us about one of the uh, 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 main features, and it has to do with structure of government. So what do we have now? We have those two columns at the moment. Uh, we have the decentralization to local government units, uh, and that is governed under the national um, uh, uh, it, uh, local government code. Okay, and that is decentralization from national government to LGUs, provinces, cities, municipalities, and barangays. And then you have. At the middle there is RDCs, no? the Regional Development Councils, which has actually what? The, the, the power is merely coordinating. No? So it's a planning body, coordination, but it has no political power. Yeah, no? So very clear. Yeah. But if you look at the uh, really the decentralization, it is only decentralization from the national and to the local government units. And that kind of decentralization is merely administrative decentralization. Okay, so which means that it's just some of the functions of government that are better, okay, so we're not being, uh, implemented at the local level. Precisely because local government units are closer to the communities. So for more uh, efficient delivery of services, those political structures that are closer to the people that they serve would be in the best position to plan and to deliver specific functions of government. And those specific functions of government are provided for under the local government code. So when people tell you that, why do we have to shift to federalism? Why don't we just improve okay, the local government code, implement it, okay, the uh, local government code well, so that we can really empower the NGUs. Okay lang po yun, but we remain okay, to be within the confines of this first column where you don't actually transfer powers to local government units, but you actually just decentralize functions. Yun yun, ha? So, okay, ha? so that's, that's a very unitary system. The second type of decentralization we have now is decentralization to autonomous regions. And under the Constitution, you have two of those. Uh, the uh, Muslim Mindanao and the Cordillera. Yung sa Cordillera lang, eh, wala sila organic law, so the decentralization is based on an executive order. But now they filed a bill in Congress, they're trying to kasi, because of the federal, the shift to federal. But here, you have decentralization of powers, at least we believe, because it is really a special arrangement. Under a unitary uh, system still, and that is in Article 10 of the Constitution. No? 
So you have the national government there, and for the first time we have a middle tier of government, which is the autonomous regional government or the Cordillera autonomous government, two my organic law na sila, and you have the LGUs. No? Unlike the RDCs, the autonomous region has political powers. It is a government by itself. So, meron siya sa railing legislature, so may regional assembly ka. So, they have uh, uh, they have policy making powers, okay, and executive powers also, and to a certain degree, some powers of the uh, judicial powers through the establishment of those Sharia courts. No? So, that, that is what we have now, the two uh, ano, no, these two uh, types of, uh, uh, of autonomy and decentralization. If we move to, uh, if we shift to a, a federal system, you now have a medium tier government, not only for the arm or the caldera, but for all the other regions. It depends on how you will divide. Okay, but you will divide the Philippines, no? But you already have what we call either federal states or regional uh, uh, region or regions, autonomous states, whatever uh, the framers will uh, decide to call those federal states. And you have national government, federal states, and you still have also local government units. But let me emphasize that the kind of decentralization here. No? Okay, we look at legal, you know, political philosophy here. It's the philosophy of shared rule and self-rule. No? So, you federal states share power with central government. So there is what we call shared sovereignty. No? Although yung mga, mga proposals now, it's because that is a very controversial when you share sovereignty or you're going to sovereignty. So they try to they try to avoid you know, the issue of sovereignty. But if you talk of shared rule, when, govern, when the Constitution provides the, what we call the assignment of powers, the national government actually, there's self-immunation, there's limitation of its own sovereignty in favor of regional states or state governments. Which means that these are the powers that are now given to the states and cannot just be taken back, unlike when if you are under a unitary system, where the decentralization is merely administrative, or even if it is decentralization of powers, because that is still in the concept of a unitary system, where the relationship is basically symmetric, Symmetric between the national and the regional government. Pero dito ho yung shared rule. Ano? So if there is going to be, if we shift to a federal system, the central government must necessarily ano, liliit, okay? while contract, contra, constrict, contract, yun, ano? while regional government should expand okay and now regional government will now decentralize administration to LGUs and now you have a regional state or state government which is a coherent okay political structure consisting of a regional government a state government and local government units it has to be coherent that's why if you if you shift the federal system, you look at the design and you see that the central government would be still be bigger or will still remain that, okay, you still have a Senate, you still have a Congress, everybody's still there, okay, but you will add another tier where you also have their own Congress, their own. So, so you see that there's something wrong with the sharing. You know, when you share, that means that inating mo yun eh, no? So, so, di ka dapat lumalaki. <laughs> dapat lumiliit ka. No? And the second, uh, yung central government, and the second uh, 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 philosophy there is yung self-rule. No? Self-rule on the part of the federal states. Okay. 
So yun yung sabihin natin, what will change yung fundamental change. Ano? Uh, hindi ko na pag-uusapan yung parliamentary, mamaya sila Sir Lito will discuss that ano? because that's now the lateral, ano, yung, ano, no? with uh, horizontal. So why federalize? Nabanggit na. Efficiency and identity. These are also the two reasons okay, why those advocates of federalism are really pushing for a federal system. Number one is good. you make government efficient, equitable distribution of national wealth, and then Mindanao. Diba? Resolution of the Mindanao conflict. So narinig na natin yan. This is very important. Ano, yung federalism and local governments, and we've been emphasizing this. You know? when, when you restructure government, and uh, you, are, you, sh you should not just be concerned about the relationship between the central and national government and the regional or state governments. You know? We have to look also at the relationship between the regional and state governments and their constituent local government units. Why? Because as I've said, the key there is for the regional states to really function as one coherent, coordinated body with its local government units. And this is where the problem lies. Because our LGUs and local politicians would never agree, I think, no? because of entrenched political interest, because we've seen that in the ARM. We've seen that also in the BBL. Even if we pass the BBL now, there's not gonna, it's not going to change the political economy of local government units in the ARM or in the Bank Saboro. Will it change? No. Because what you are reconfiguring only is the relationship with the regional government and the national government. You LGUs will remain to look up to the national local government code. Oh, that's where we, the era, that's, you should not touch that. No? We would never even accept okay, a, a structure where the era will be forced through the regional government. They will not allow that. Because that is where their power lies. So ngayon, eh yun ang problema. Eh kapag ginalaw mo naman yun, eh hindi nila susuportahan yung federalism mo. So we have proposals. Ewan ko, tigyan na titignan natin yung mga proposals. Ano po ba ang mangyayari sa LGUs dyan? Ah, the same lang. Oh, you still, you will still, ano, your power. Walang ano, no. Okay. Every time we talk about federalism to barangay chairperson, uh, anong tanong nila, what will happen to the barangay? Wala naman sabihin mo, i-abolish na po kayo. <laughs> or provinces, uh, sorry po, kasi super province na po yung state government. So, abolish na po natin. So, which means that it's a question of efficiency also, no? Will, how many levels of government? Central? Okay, yung kanina? So, mag a ka ng one pair, no? So, siguro, pag tinanong mo sa Amerika, mabilis lang yun, eh, no? From, uh, from federal, state, mga counties na agad yun, eh, no? Tapos sa ating LGUs natin, mga napakaliit, no? Lalo na dito sa ating lugar na uh, because you need to appease uh, families, so you create LGUs, no? So, yun ang naging problema dyan, no? Okay, so sabi natin, delineation of powers between federal states and LGUs is as critical as central state relations. Now, uh, I, I leave to the other speakers na ha, yung other aspects of the efficiency part. I'll talk about the Mindanao uh, uh, ano, the solution to Mindanao conflict. In theory, if it's a multi-level talaga, uh, sabi natin, ano, yung multicultural uh, country, and you have ethno-linguistic conflicts. Federalism is the best uh, uh, political uh, system. No? Uh, we've seen that in uh, India, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, and now Nepal is looking at it, Malaysia, Indonesia, and now the Philippines also to manage multi-ethnicity and pluralistic society. No? Ang naging problema ng buta rin dito, <clears throat> okay, so, We know that the peace agreements are one of the ways by which okay, we can attain peace in Mindanao. No? So, and now is really the, the issue of implementation of peace agreements. 
So the issues there, why these peace agreements have not been fully implemented, whether peace agreements with the MNLF or the MILF, is because of constitutionality issues. We've seen that no, in the BBL and uh, even in the ARM. The ARM law is good enough, but the problem is that they cannot be fully implemented because of constitutional issues. So the, for instance, if you look at the, uh, the the police is already a regional police, you know, for the army is already in the armed law, but it has never been implemented because of the uh, resistance of the national police saying that according to the constitution there is only one national police. Okay, yeah. So tega talaga yung constitution talaga is a problem, no? The constitution is really an obstacle to the implementation of these agreements. No president has actually admitted this except this current president. Huh? So you know, and the issue, sabi mo yung moral authority versus autonomy of the rest, and I will talk about basically yung incremental approach. No? Okay. Uh, ayan. Ito po talaga, ito importante to eh, when you talk of constitutionality. Are we, are, are we looking at framework or are we looking at specific provisions? Now, in the discussion of the BBL under the previous administration, uh, the late Miriam Defensor Santiago no? or si Justice Mendoza were talking about the unconstitutionality of the framework of the CAB and of the proposed BBL. Why? Because it actually calls for a sub-state. Ayun yun. And sabi nila, this is only okay under a federal system of government. So, huwag mo nang tingnan yung mga provisions. The provisions just flow from the framework. And if the framework itself is unconstitutional, then the provisions are also unconstitutional. Yun lang ang importante doon. Of course, uh, most of us, eh, kasama na po tayo, we took the risk. Sabi natin, eh, sige, pwede yan within the parameters of this constitution. So, ito, tanggalin mo na ito, baguhin mo na itong wording ng mga to. And it comes to a point na kung ipasa mo man yan, there are so many diverse interpretations na napakahirap din i-implement. Okay, ha? So, yun ang, yun ang problema, yung workability okay, of the law that you will pass. That in the end, bureaucrats, because implementation po, you leave it to the bureaucrats, eh. And in the end, if your bureaucrats have a unitary mindset, there is no way you can implement this. We know this based on our experience in the arm. Maganda lang po yung mga pirmahan ng peace agreement. Pagka sa implementation na ho, na po ang masusunod po dyan, yung mga assistant secretary, mga director, eh, sasabihin lang po sa'yo, ang constitution lang, hindi ba implement? Oh, di ba? So the reason why you really have to entrench this in the constitution is really change the mindset of the bureaucracy. That you need to really decentralize in a meaningful way. Ano? Yan ang kinang importante to. So, sabi, a box of moral subsidy has no place in a unitary framework or solution, no less than a federal system can accommodate. Okay? You refine the BPL provisions. Pwede na rin, ano? Actually, hindi naman po kailangan din mag-shift kung talagang tutusin. But you still need to amend the Constitution to accommodate this. No? Kasi pwede ka naman pagkaroon ng sub-state futures even under a unitary system as long as that is in the Constitution. Ano? No less than the Constitution. Now, so ito ho, the, the President has understa understands this. Eh, no? So in his inaugural address, ano sabi niya? Okay, I am committed to implementing the peace agreements, all peace agreements, no? MNLF, MILF, in step with legal and constitutional reforms. What does the president say? The president say that, yes, let's implement it, but I believe that you cannot implement it without charter change. Which means that until and unless the, the charter is amended, you cannot fully implement the peace agreements. Now, this is problematic now. No? Why? Okay, because the MLF's position Eh, siguro hindi nyo naman po masisisi talaga yun ang comfort level nila eh, no? Now, when they sign this agreement with the Aquino administration, the Aquino administration's position is you don't need to change the charter to implement this agreement. 
But now here comes this new political context where you have federalism, where you have charter change, and a president willing to sabihin natin spend his political capital for changing the constitution for Mindanao peace. But you, but a problem, drawing pa yun. <laughs> drawing yung federal, drawing yung charter change. Kaya dito na kami. No, muna. That is the reason why the MILS position is BBL first before federal. But that, but you, you are, we are bound to impasse on this, no? Because at the end of the Congress, BBL first, pero hindi mo naman ma-implement yung proposals niya without charter change. Okay, napansin niyo yung paikot-ikot na yun. So you will, now, now. Of course, Congress can pass the BBL, but it will not be the BBL that you are proposing. There will be changes that will all be watered down, you know? So this will be what that is not what you submitted. So kaya naging problema ngayon, doon sa list ng, uh, ng, ano, no, ng uh, priority bills, no, ng LEDA, wala yung BBL, so takbo sila yung leadership ng FI. Ano ho ba nangyayari? Ano? Eh, the President endorses a BBL that is constitutional. He is not endorsing. Wala man na narinig na he's endorsing what has been submitted. Okay? Kasi marami pa rin talaga ang problema doon. In fact, based on our studies, eh nako, nadagdagan pa ho. No? Kasi under this new proposal, yung election sa arm for the plebiscite, uh, election for the plebiscite, eh, arm as a geographical unit. What does that mean? Hindi by province. Kundi you look at the, you, you, the majority of the inhabitants of the whole arm, if they say yes to the BBL, then the whole arm will be, the, those already, the provinces now belonging to the arm, will now be part of the Bangsamoro. Of course, definitely those in the island provinces will not accept that. You know? And that is, uh, that is clearly unconstitutional. Kasi ho sa Constitution talks about provinces and cities, ano? Okay, the phrase geographical areas actually refer to the Cordillera, not to the Bangsamoro. No? But that is, ang haba ho po sa pinyan. But the, but the point that I'm making here is that we are in a very, very complicated situation, ano? We are very complicated situation because yes, we know that you need to change the target Yes, you know that you have to shift to federal. Ang problema ho ngayon, you can only federalize the whole country. So which means that you will also have to listen to the majority of Filipinos in the crafting of the Bangsamoro region or federal state. Kaya yun yung fear ng ating mga Moro brothers and sisters. Kasi dito ho, pag sinag-subject ko na yan sa National Federalism Movement, eh baka malunod yung mga peace agreements. Siyempre, you have to negotiate now with the other regions. Do you think the other regions would let go of some of their resources and some of the uh, taxes to be given to the Bank of Borok? Siyempre, hindi kasi kanya-kanya na yan. So, there is also that argument that it's better to negotiate with one national government than negotiating with all the other regions. The, you look at the proposals now, definitely, yes, Bangsamoro is state government. Oh, yeah, sabi. Merong Bangsamoro talaga dyan, one, one, ano yan, one federal state dyan. Ang problema mo, symmetric, which means that you don't, they don't recognize the distinct Okay, they don't recognize the history, they don't recognize also that there has been agreements already signed on this. You know? So which means that you have to be careful also, just by saying that, yeah, federalism is the solution. But if it is not the right kind of federalism, if it is symmetric federalism that does not recognize, okay, the unique and distinctiveness and all the peace agreements, all that have been done, then they will only have powers like all the other regional states. And that would be very risky, you know? Okay, ha? Kasi iba po yung assertion ng uh, Bangsamoro is ang assertion po nila is sovereignty based na napanggit na kanina yan, you know? So first, yung iba ang assertion naman ng other states is equitable distribution. So these are totally different assertions, no? 
So, kaya kailangan yung tinatawag asymmetric federalism. So, ma mabilis na lang po ito, no? This is, this is what many people cannot understand, no? Even Congress, even, even the revolutionary groups. That when you have a signed agreement, and you translate that to public policy, the, the arena changes. So it's not the same anymore as two-party negotiations. This will now be interest-based. This will now be multi-party public arena work. So now we have to look at workability, capacity, resources, constitutionality. The problem with the implementation of the peace agreements in the past administrations is we depended it on leaders. A specific person, especially yung kay Noy Noy. Diba? Why is it that the roadmap is only for six years? Dapat matapos yun. Pag kumali si Noy Noy, kaya matapos. He is the only one. Eh, hindi mo pwede if you do political reforms because a peace agreement is essentially a political reform that will take really a long time. So kaya nga you don't base it on persons. Eh, syempre yung mga revolutionary groups naman, they want immediately to be in power, so they go for that short term also, no? But that is unrealistic, no? In terms of evolving, effective, relevant, efficient government, no? So hindi naman pwede firma ka lang, mabaya mo, mabaya ka lang si Batman sa, sa implementation. Sinasabi ko nga ako sa inyo, pag firma ka mo yan, lalo ba si BPL, yung LGU mo pareho pa rin, eh. Di ba? And, and, and the LGUs are the key to this, you know? whether it is delivery of services, whether addressing violent extremism, the LGUs matter. Unless you change and reform the political economy there, then nothing is gonna change. You know? So you will just raise expectations for people, or you will just change leaders. That's it. But structures would remain to be the same. You know? And, would there be, and if there would be more money, that means there's just money going to pockets of people. Ano? That's the only thing that will change. Okay, kaya na kailangan yung mga ganito, talagang tinitingnan mo. Dapat yung dito kong policy and implementation part have to be really thought of well. So there's a need to really expand and really the discourse on this, no, it has to be interest-based, look at workability, capacity, resources, and especially constitutionality. Okay, listen na natin yan. Last slide. May naring ka bang bell? Wala pa. Ah, wala pa naring na bell? Parang matagal na. Baka naman yun na nyo, ha? Anyway, talaga po, eh, kailangan talaga ng incremental approach to this. You cannot have a zero-sum game dito. Yung ang problema sa legislation ng BBL, naging zero-sum. Eh, yung sikat ngayon, one time, big time, ano? <laughs> Or zero-sum, winner take all. And uh, yung, you know, when we get to advise so yung ating mga revolutionary groups and government, ang hirap naman ito, no? Na in the end, hayaan niyo yung Congress na pumasa, and then sa tanginyo niyo kung tanggap niyo ba yan o hindi. Hindi eh, naman ganun dapat <laughs> yung mayayari dyan. Kasi pag sinabi nilang tanggap nila, tapos that's all watered down, eh they cannot explain that to their own people also, no? especially to the young people. There is, alam niyo talaga, the restlessness of people on the ground, ano? And the lack of, sabi natin, uh, already trust on this, in the institutions, and trust in processes, and peace processes, napakalaki na ho, ano? In these areas. Kaya talaga, ano yung sabi mong violent, the, uh, the ano, violent extremism can really take root, ano? Under this political context. So, uh, what you need really is a series of legislations and eventually, uh, the being nothing charter change amendments and good transitional mechanisms and processes. Why do we need this now? Because the political context under which the peace agreements are to be implemented has changed. And what is the change? The change is there is an opportunity for charter change and for federalism, which was not there and not present when they were negotiating all these peace agreements. So do you put wine in an old wine skin? It will burst. You have to put new wine skin, a new wine in a new wine skin. 
But the problem is that there has been political interests that have been entrenched already in the past processes. That is the problem. And when you talk of political reforms, if you talk about charter change, what is the nature of a constitution? For the political scientists who are there, they were the constitution, one of the functions of the constitution is to, two minutes well, or time nagat, wala pa yung two minutes, ha? Hindi ko nalinig yung two minutes, so give me, give me three minutes, vale, ha? So, so ang functional ng constitution is really to reconcile and manage conflicting political interest. That's why if you shift a federal system or change the charter but will actually just entrench partisan political interest, political interest per se are not bad, but partisan political interest, then we are not resolving the problems of this country. Okay? So on that note, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Benny, and also to uh, Professor Concepcion for the enlightening, uh, we can say, lectures on federalism, and especially how it, it is related to the present Rabang Samoro uh, issue. So for, by the way, uh, if you have any questions or comments, I request that please reserve them. After the discussions, we'll give their uh, views on the two lectures or presentations. So sa presentation, uh, sa discussion pa, sino ba mauna? Si Dr. Paragiton or si Atorin? Sa si Atorin na dyan? Uh, si Dr. Paragiton na lang. Okay, so may I call on Dr. Paragiton to give his uh, reaction or response. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. So, uh, Assalamualaikum, good morning, and so, uh, thank you for this uh, invitation to, to discuss with this uh, August House. Uh, the framework that I will be using in reacting to the two uh, presentations would be structure uh, and agency. Uh, structure to relate with the form of government, like the federalism, and agency since uh, attorney uh, Makani were, were, uh, was mentioning about uh, the people who are implementing and driving the, the government, uh, the implementors. So I'll be uh, touching on the agency of the human beings, huh? the people, their actions, their tradition, their will, uh, including bad will. Um, <clears throat> let me start in saying that many people say that our Philippine constitution is a beautiful constitution. Our Philippine Constitution is almost, almost the best, probably. And there were a lot of uh, additions and amendments, uh, maybe not amendments, but uh, there were a lot of, uh, uh, how do we call this, uh, additions that were really responsive to the many problems and calls uh, on the ground or even the level of the LGU. For example, <coughs> if we clamor for uh, if we clamor for the local governance, if we clamor for the decentralization, as was also already mentioned, we already have the, the local government code that empowers the barangay, the people on the ground, the NGOs. If we ask for uh, autonomy, we can cite two examples there, the ARM and the uh, Autonomous Region of Cordillera. If we want cultural democracy, as it is being promised by the federalism, we have the Iprago. But what happens uh, even before until uh, before uh, President uh, Duterte? We have a lot of uh, mismanagements. We have a lot of problems, difficulties, uh, and they need. But I would like to zero in with corruption. So, given this uh, beautiful constitution, with a lot of um, with a lot of additions that would cater to the problems on the ground, 
but we still have uh, a lot of corruption and a lot of problems. But when President um, Rodrigo came, we see also a lot of changes, even in ARM. I have heard some uh, reports from the ARM recently, and they have given us good progress, no? progress in their management. We see, for example, uh, in, at least in the Sabonga Peninsula, there are a lot of uh, movements already on the ground, giving titles to the IPs. You might can see and cut the applications. They are almost running out of time, actually, because the budget uh, is there, and they are, uh, you know, have uh, they only have a very short time to to try to implement uh, their move now. And then, um, if we see, therefore, even in the whole Philippines. Rodrigo Duterte is uh, doing a lot with regards to, you know, uh, limiting or probably decreasing corruption uh, nationwide and even our progress with drugs. So what is the difference? Uh, the difference is that we are using the same form of government right now, but there seems to be a little alleviation, a change, an improvement that is going on. The same structure, the same form of government, but why are there somehow uh, apparently good results. Why are you know, people of the Republic of the Philippines give this high uh, trust with the presidency right now? What is the difference? Same form of government, but only the difference is the one managing the government. The political will. The people who really are very serious with their job. So why the need for federal federalism? Some say, well, the local government code really comes from the top, from the, from the Congress and the town. Fine. So therefore, medyo kulang. Um, what about the arm? Well, again, as already explained, um, medyo nasesentro pa rin sa, you know, sa, sa unitary form of government. So medyo kulang. There are constitutional barriers also, as they say. That's why they even uh, want to uh, move for uh, the BBM. Um, well, there is a good promise in the federalism. But you know, I think this time people are tired of promises. And probably this is one thing that would explain why many people you know, give their trust to the controversial uh, way of uh, running the Philippines by uh, Duterte. Maybe because people now are tired of promises and they want results. They want uh, people who deliver, who uh, deliver uh, their functions. <clears throat> so, what is good in federalism? Of course, it promises a lot of things. But I think one thing that we would, well, at least for me, one thing that we need also to look at is the people who will manage the new form of government. In other words, even if we change the form of government, but if we put almost same people, it might be the same story. Uh, maybe corruption will just transfer from the national to the local. If we give so much power to the local, if we give so much power to the provinces, it may also mean so much power to corrupt. It may also mean so much power to you know, take advantage of their own place, of their own uh, coverage. Um, so maybe if federalism is a good promise, perhaps we also have to look at the people who will manage it. If we would like to reform our form of government, then we also, I think, also need to reform our leaders, our bureaucrats the people who will manage. And this is where the problem is more than difficult. If I will go by my uh, argument that in changing the form of government to federalism, we also need to change the mindset of the people, the way people decide, the way people choose, the way people become empowered, and the way people you know, decide for people and you know, implement the laws, then uh, I think really have to go back to the problem, not anymore on the form of government, but on the problem on how to change the people. And that is where I would like to think about the discipline that we need. Um, 
Singapore did not just you know uh, become a country like now in just uh, one year or two years. I think we need discipline first before we can even move to a new form of government. But who would discipline? Our leaders right now? Who can discipline us? Sino yung may bakal ng kamay? You know, I believe that structure can really influence the agency. In other words, kung gagawin natin napaka-stricto ng rules natin dito, for example, sa gathering na to, people will have to be, you know, controlled. Pero kung maluwag yung ating uh, sistema dito, maluwag yung rules dito, you know, people can just you know, do anything what they want and it can create a lot of problems and a lot of difficulties. But if we will implement a very strict rule, for example, yung bell, we decide that kapag may bell, to binis na lang, second bell, that's it. Or kapag sinasabing uh, uho na, kapag sinasabing hindi pwede magsigarilo dito, talagang hahabuling uh, naman. If we have strict rules here, somehow it can also discipline the people, it can control the behavior of the people. So, I hope that in the, in the federalism that we want, I hope hindi na natin ulitin yung mga promises na nilagay natin sa you know, same constitution, same uh, ipralo, same arm. Bakit? Kasi parang wala masyado silang nagawa. Yung form, yung, uh, yung structure in arm, yung structure ng ipralo, yung structure ng constitution natin, parang ang daming na nalusot. Ang daming na nakapaglaro around, no? around the law. They even use, uh, you know, yung mga pitfalls na ng law natin. No? Ang daming butas, sabi nila, no? Na kahit na gagawin nila, wala namang humuhuli sa kanila. And therefore, we have now the culture of impunity, the culture of corruption, and so on and so forth. Sana, kahit magandang tingnan from the academic point of view, yung federalism, sana naman, huwag na natin ulitin yung same na structure. Same promises as we see from our very beautiful constitution. Same promises that we see, for example, in Ipra Law. Same promises that we see in ARM. Sana, mas strict ko na. Sana may bakal na kamay na naka-integrated doon sa federalism. Or else, we will not be able to discipline the people. If we cannot discipline the people, if we cannot reform the people, sa so tingin ko, use this lang yung reform sa form of government. Ngayon, malaking problema yun. It may also imply that, are we ready for federalism? The kind of people we have right now, the kind of you know, Filipino leaders we have right now, are we ready for federalism? Uh, mukhang kailangan pa natin ng disiplina. Kailangan pa natin magkita ng maraming hinuhuli ng mga korap, maraming mga drug addicts or mga drug lords na nanuhuli, at marami na natatakot, and for years that might change our culture, that might change the way we look at government, the way we contribute to the government. And by that time, or perhaps, we can say we could be ready for... ...ang na sinasabi natin na mag-move tayo from a unitary system to a federal system and try to bring down the discussion from yung uh, theory at hatakin ko ng konti doon sa praxis at magbigay ako ng iilang limbawa doon sa experience natin para po mas maintindihan natin yung operationalization ng mga konsepto at kung paano ba uh, nagkakaroon ng effect yung theory na yun doon sa struktura ng gobyerno sa pagpapatakbo ng gobyerno, gobyerno mismo at sa ano mga programa. Um, and so I'll, I'll start off with, of course I'll skew it with uh, our experience ay yung ARMM and then yung uh, demand for self-determination of the banks of Moro para may konteksto yung uh, pag-uusap. Ang unang gusto kong ibahagi ay sinabi ko ng Pagulo na gusto niyang lumipat tayo, ah, mag-shift tayo uh, from the unitary system to federal system as part of uh, his proposition to resolve the Bangsamoro question. At precisely, yung Bangsamoro question, when it's translated into legal terms, ay yung issue ng sovereignty. Ah, ano yun na pinag-usapan ko natin? Um, Ibig sabihin, um, yung issue ng mga Moro ay yung kawalan ng sariling pagpapasya, yung denial of the right to determine their future. At ito ay uh, may, may, may hugot. Ha? Hindi lang out of the blue ay sinabing kailangan meron kaming right to self-determination. Siyempre, ang kwento ay 
yung sovereignty ay nawala. Magsimula nung binenta ng mga Espanyol ang Pilipinas doon sa uh, mga Amerikano. Huh? 1898. Prior to 1898, yung mga Moro, yung Sultanates, huh? Sulu and Maguindanao, already were full states. Huh? Ibig sabihin ng ganap na estado ay meron kang teritoryo, meron kang tao, meron kang gobyerno, meron kang sovereign, sovereignty. Huh? Yung tatlo, sa ngayon meron pa. So, meron kang mga Sumoro people, meron kang arm as a government, meron ka namang meron ka pang teritoryo na nakatefined. What is lacking and what's not addressed currently by the current constitution is the issue of sovereignty. Ang sovereignty, para mas maigi maintindihan, ay dalawa. Yung internal na sovereignty, yun yung uncontrollable na right kung nagpo-possess ng authority to determine kung ano yung gusto nila. Sa kaso ng constitution natin, yun ay nakalatch dun sa Congress. So, whatever policy, whatever law, Congress decides to enact, it can do so. Ha? Walang pwedeng mag-restrict noon. Yun yung expression ng internal sovereignty. Externally, mapapansin mo yung sovereignty pagka malayang pwedeng makipagrelasyon yung bansa sa ibang bansa. Ha? So pag outsider ka, pag yung Pilipinas tinignan mo, if you're outside of the Philippines and you look at the Philippines and it is able to relate to any country ha, through its diplomatic relations, ibig sabihin yun ay nag exercise ng sovereignty, which is external. And we call it independence. Ha? Yun yung sovereignty. Now, ano ang problema sa unitary na setup? Ito ho ay, na, nasabi na natin kanina, ha? Ano ang problema doon sa sovereignty? Sa unitary setup. Ang problema mo sa sovereignty sa unitary setup, indivisible yung sovereignty. Hindi pwedeng hatiin. Yung determination kung anong batas, anong pulisiya ang ipapasa, hindi pwedeng hatiin ang kongreso sa sarili niya at sa iba pang sub-national legislative um, um, assemblies. Hindi niya pwedeng gawin yun. Kasi mahahati yung sovereignty. So kaakibat ng unitary concept ng government is the indivisibility of sovereignty. And you, you go through the rulings of the Supreme Court relating to the indivisibility of sovereignty. Talagang indivisible yung konsepto ng sovereignty sa unitary na konstitusyon ng Pilipinas. At yun yung nagiging problema natin sa hindi lang sa Mindanao, pati meski doon sa mga sub-national legislative assembly. Case in point. Yung autonomous city ni Jose Mindanao, meron siyang kapangyarihan na mag-determine at mag-issue no? mga permits para sa pagbimina. In fact, nag-issue ang regional government ng permits sa pagbimina doon sa Lanwian Island. Ha? Yung tumbagaan. Kasi ang minimina doon ay nickel. In the organic law, yung definition ng strategic minerals, ha, ito ay hatian ng kapangyarihan. Ang may kapangyarihan kung sino pwede mag-issue ng permit ha, ay pag hindi strategic minerals, pwede yung regional government. Ha. Ang exception ay strategic minerals. If you look at 1954 sa enumeration ng strategic minerals, wala yung nickel. Ha. Wala, hindi doon. So nag-issue sila ng permit. Unfortunately, merong mining firm na hindi nakakuha ng permit sa regional government, pupunta siya sa national. At nag-issue ng policy ang national government. Ang sinabi, yung nickel now is a strategic mineral. So therefore, hindi pwedeng issue ng arm ng permit. Yung national government lang ang pwedeng mag-issue nito. Ito po yung sinasabi natin, conflict doon sa exercise ng sovereignty. Can we resolve it within the unitary system of government? And why true? Well, not just for ARMM, but it can happen in some other local government units. Huh? Because yung division of powers huh, is not a real power sharing in a unitary setup. Hindi mo power sharing yan. Huh? Ito ay delegation. Huh? Technically, sa law, pag sinabi mong delegation, What has been delegated can actually be taken back, superseded, or set aside, amended. Because the ultimate holder of power is 
yung one national government. Ha? Ito yung konsepto sa Constitution. Ha? Now, you cannot go beyond the Constitution because meron tayong constitutionalism. Ha? Hindi ka pwedeng lumagpas sa Constitution. Otherwise, yung acts mo or yung policies mo would be declared unconstitutional. So, wala siyang effect. Yun yung problema. Now, pagka ang problema pala, at yung bang sa moral question na sinasabi natin, ang translation nun ay, yung bang sa moral question is a question about the lost sovereignty of the bang sa moros. How do you resolve it? Pwede ba na hindi ibalik yung sovereignty? O, nasubukan na natin, natry na natin yung mga regional government na dumaan. Yung kanilang illustration, regional governments na mga dumaan. Yung power sharing doon na sinasabi. You look at Article 20, Article 10, Section 20 of the Constitution. That's where the heart of the problem is. That's the grant of power to the regional government. And I read to you the provision of Section 20, Article 10. Within its territorial jurisdiction and subject to the provisions of this Constitution and national laws, the Organic Act of Autonomous Region shall provide for legislative powers over administrative organization, creation of sources of revenue, ancestral domain, etc., etc. You have an enumeration there of nine items of the powers. So, apparently, merong powers yung central government, meron din siyang pinigay na nine powers to the regional government. The question, however, is, is it a delegation of power or a mere delegation of power? And you read through the cases ruled by the Supreme Court, huh? you begin with Limbona versus Mangilin, you go to Sema versus Bilangalan, or you go to the latest one, huh? 1153. That's the synchronization law of the ARMM. What the Supreme Court consistently said is that yung binigay na power is a delegation, and therefore it can be taken back. It can be amended, it can be superseded. So, even if I list 1,001 powers to a sub-national legislative assembly, if I still hold yung indivisible na sovereignty, I can still take it back. So, it is nogatory. Wala kong kwenta tayo, sinasabi natin, binigay na powers. Kasi pwede ko naman bawiin eh. So, if Congress does not agree with your policy, eh, in the case of yung mining permits or education policy, they can always pass a national law superseding the law that you pass. And that's where the problem really is. Because you cannot solve the Banks of Moral question without addressing the real question. What is the Banks of Moral question? It is a question of lost sovereignty. What is the only proposition na pupwede without breaking up the Republic? The only proposition sound enough to address the issue of sovereignty is federalism. Huh? You still maintain yung whole Pilipinas, but you grant na yung sovereignty now is divided. Huh? Hindi lang yung iisang national power that exercises national sovereignty. You allow some powers to be not just delegated this time around, you delegate through a constitutional instrument, which is your federal constitution. Huh? Kaya, Federalism is poetos, it is a covenant, and therefore, neither of the two can amend or change the covenant. You have to agree on the changing, on changing the covenant. Which is why, sa tingin namin, huh? if you look at the agreements signed by the, by the MILF and government, merong power sharing, huh? annex of power sharing, practically divides the powers to central government reserve, then yung bangsa more exclusive, and you have shared powers, we call it concurrent. Uh, so pinaghati na. If you look at yung drawing kanina ko ni sir, very illustrative, uh, kung ano yung federal list at ano yung state list, hindi ko nagwa-convert yun, uh, magkaiba yun, magkahiwala. Ibig sabihin, walang kuhaan ng powers. Uh. So, kung binigay ko yung power for you to grant mining permits for specific resources, I will not take that. I will not issue a permit for the same mining uh, resources that I've, I've already allowed you. Kasi, kung gagawin ko yun, pupunta siya doon sa 
arbiter, which is a constitutional court that, that practically rules on the determination of whether the exceed ka those exercise of powers mo. So yun yung kakailangan din natin. As of today, hindi po nangyayari yun. Kasi kukunin ng national yung binigay sa inyong powers, and yet, hindi mo pwede questionin yun. Kasi, hawak pa rin niya yun. Siya pa rin yung ultimate na determinant. So, ang tingin namin, yung perfection ng peace agreement really happens when you shift to a federal system that now squarely addresses the question of sovereignty and therefore, the Pangasamoro question. And this can be true to those regions that also aspires for a legitimate self-determination agenda. Kasi yun naman ang ultimate na gusto ng mga tao. Meron ang historical uh, antecedent for Pangasamoro, but it can also be true to some other regions in the country. So yun po yung tingin namin ay uh, uh, pinaka-central doon sa debate no? unitary and moving towards a federal setup in the country. Maraming salamat po at sa mga Okay, uh, thank you very much, Attorney. So we've heard the all sides of federalism, from federalism 101 to what to be the composition, etc. And now the reactors also they provided their views. So without that, may I first call on the two speakers to, to be please uh, come in front so that you will be grilled by the audience. Uh, and also, of course, the two reactors will discuss us. I may call the doctor para dito ng attorney si Narito to be in front also. Para naman, hindi na yung dalawa lang ang mag-i-grill. Kayo rin, siyempre. Nagkakanda lang. Ako lang yung taga-motary. Hindi mo diretso ang motary. So with that, may I now uh, ask if anybody would like to start asking the questions? Uh, how about si sir? By the way, please uh, give your name before asking. Uh, sir Lorenzo, sana po. Uh, sir Lorenzo, sana po. Just one question. Your position on federalism is that unless there is the not revolution, unless there is a depression or there is a shift of military to uh, federal, there is going to be no uh, federalism. Right. Number two, there is even no funds of moral, there is even no PDF. Yung, yung kung tunay na federalismo, ang sentro noon ay yung division ng sovereignty. Lahat ng pretensions na kunyari ay nagbigay ka ng powers pero pwede naman bawiin ay hindi mo federal yun. Yung pa din ay unitary. Unfortunately, as uh, uh, Bill Macari was saying, kadamihan ng proposals now, uh, as it is, doon sa federalism ay hindi tunay na nag address ng issue ng sovereignty. Meron pa din uh, if you read through the proposals, talagang meron pa ring central government that dictates na uh, ultimately kung ano yung pwede gawin at hindi. At pwede niyang pakilaman yung mga binigay na powers. That, that, that's gonna... It, it's a problem. I, I think yung binibenta ng federalism sa ngayon ay hindi mo tunay na federalismo. Yung BPL pwedeng maipasa na hindi nag-shift ng federalism. Ang hindi pwedeng sabihin ay yung comprehensive agreement on the Bank Samoro ay fully implemented in a unitary system. Kasi hindi ko mangyayari yun. Uh, marami mong issue doon sa framework mismo. Kasi magkaiba ko talaga yung framework. And also, in the cup, talaga namang inadmit na doon sa kung kailangan baguhin yung constitution para may implement yung cup, kailangan baguhin yung constitution. So, what I, my position really is that prior to all of this, you have to have charge of change. Without which is lack of federalism, in Kapmo is half baked. Right? That, that is the that is just the reality yes, of yes. So we are our point of departure and debate is from that point of, from 
When we shift to a federal system, the motivation for shifting is different doon sa Bangsamoro and the rest of the country. Yun ang gusto sabihin doon. The reason for the rest of the country maybe is efficiency, you know, uh, equitable distribution, resources, political power, okay yun. But yung sa Bangsamoro is sovereignty based, sharing sovereignty with central government. So if you shift to a federal system that is symmetric, which means that everybody will have the same power, Bangsamoro and the rest of the country, you don't recognize that particular the driver why you need to change the constitution. That's why they were reacting when uh, Speaker Alvarez, before even the president was inaugurated, saying that when we shift to federal system, tap tapos na yung problema ng Mindanao. All these peace agreements, armed law, lahat yan will be moot and academic. So, na, syempre, mahirap po yun, ano? Kasi that means that you're not recognizing this because all these peace agreements are expression of the aspiration of the Bangsamoro. So, which means that in the whole shift to a federal system, you have to understand and the, the driver for the establishment of a Bangsamoro federal state. The second issue is BBL. No? Yung sinasabi ni, ni Nagin, yeah, you can pass the BBL, but it will not be really full implementation of all these peace agreements. Because the peace agreements actually call for a sub-state. You know, kailangan na talaga harapin na yung issue na yun eh. Kasi ang daming mga ano, ano, sub-state yun. Kaya what we're proposing actually, eh, kailangan lang talaga dito eh, eh, mag-usap-usap is you need to put some kind of a stage in between the transition and this BBL. Ano? Now, what we are proposing is, sige, let's pass an interim BBL na muna. No? Yung siyasay mo, interim na muna. Okay, you can have the transition, you can have an interim bank sa Moro government, but you can only implement fully the peace agreement after charter change. So yun ang kailangan mo kasi... That's kasi, very uh, 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 That's very clear. That is just what I want to present. Because uh, uh, to level off, karami kasi ng sabi, or a lot of us will be thinking, a lot of our people will be thinking is, if the Constitution will not be affected to, the, to, to what we are being trying to push through, we'll be the hell, okay? What we're just trying to say, the BBL now is going through the process okay, of the Congress in order to have, that is very important, yes. that we have an interim. Oh, see, any BBL that will, pass, that will be passed now will definitely be watered down because there is no charter change yet. It cannot really be accommodated in this current constitution. So I don't know what's very clear. Yes, so oh, that, we in Vietnam must understand yes. that this is really what we have to do. One point, point, one point. One, point huh? one important point also is you can we can even resolve this without shifting to federal then, which means the surgical amendment of the Constitution. You amend Article 10.